Dear President, first of all, many thanks for this very kind opportunity for my school. The Brussels the International Catholic School it shows worthy of person in the European Parliament's commitment toward the new generation of European citizens. This commitment, however, needs to be bilateral. Therefore, it is important to engage a new generation of citizens with the European institutions. To this end, I would like to address the questions that are relevant to the many youth who are about to conclude their secondary studies and enrolling in enrolling the university. And, and, as you know, the youth want clarity. We have straight questions and we ask for straight answers. We like how the Gospel of Matthew puts it in the Sermon of the Mount. Let your words be simply yes or no. Therefore, I ask you to give an unambiguous answer to my questions and always be starting with either a clear yes or a clear no. Dear President, are you ready to start taking my questions? Yes, of course. Obviously, we start with the European Union and the youth. The United Kingdom is leaving the European Union, thereby raising doubts such as do we really need the European Union? What about European Union for the European youth? Do the youth need the European Union? Particularly, my first question is, has the European Union anything to offer to those youth who are concluding the secondary studies and considering enrolling at the university? Yes. There are a lot of European projects, for example, Erasmus. It's possible to study in every member state. I think it's a good project for the young people, for the young students, for a, a better link with the students living in other countries. It's important also for a different overview. Because if you live in Italy or in Belgium, you have only a national view. If it's possible to go to Spain, or to Portugal, or to Malta, it's possible to have another view. And finally, you will have a larger view, another view more important. This is I think crucial for your education, also for the future. I remember when I was very young, my father lived in Paris, and my life in Paris is every day behind me. And this helped me for a better communication, for a different view. When I study a problem, I study this problem not only with the Italian mentality, but also with the French and now with the European mentality. For this, I think it's important to use this Erasmus uh, program. And now there is also a, a new program, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. To be European entrepreneur is a, another opportunity. Second point, the role of the group. You are the president of the European Parliament, an institution at the core of the legislative function of the European Union. Legislation is about making rules. Often I hear that the European Union is only about rules we must comply with. But, as you know, rules are sometimes not so welcome among the youth. The truth is that the European Union may appear to be unnecessarily strict. My second question is, is or is not the image of the European Union as a sort of big brother the correct one? No, it's not a big brother. Europe is an opportunity, but we need rules. It's our cultural heritage to have rules, simple and clear rules. We need more important rules and less stupid rules, but we need rules. We need rules for a strategy at European level. For this, uh, I think, subsidiarity is important. 
we need European rules for the most important problems. And then we need rules at national level and at local level. But we need rules. Without rules, it's impossible also to play football. Next question, economics and euro. Many youth have grown up knowing only this culture. But yet, we may be confused about whether the euro is good or bad. The question is, is this currency good for the future of my generation? To clarify, can the euro as a monetary system foster European sustainable development, jobs and growth of enterprises? Yes, of course. Euro is a good choice. Of course, it's possible that we need to do more. We need to work for the implementation of the banking union. We need to conclude the process of the banking union. And Euro is our money. It's better for us to have Euro as Italian because it's possible to go to France with the same money. It's possible to go during your travel to, to Spain or to to Germany to use Euro without change. This choice helps tourism, this choice helps growth, this choice helps small and medium sized companies. It's easy to, to, to work on trade through the same money. This is important. But of course, we need good rules and we need to, to complete our strategy of an internal market. Euro is one point, but we need to, to, to have better solutions in another sector for a good implementation of the Euro system. So far we have discussed the hardware, that is the system of the European Union, where it means to be in or out, sort of law and the Euro. I would now like to turn the discussion towards the software, that is the principles that guide the European Union, namely its ethical values. Poverty, equality, equity worldwide, climate change, migration issues. Is or is not the European Union still engaged globally with such social and environmental goals? Yes, of course. We need values if we want to strengthen our European Union, if you want to defend our identity, if you want to defend our political engagement, human rights, freedom, freedom of the press, women rights, gender equality, also defense of life, engagement against climate change, against the poverty. We need to have a dream. And we don't have a dream without values. Values are the most important points in our heart. Without values, it's impossible to live all together. It's impossible to live, to live only for more money. Example, we are the only one continent in the world without death penalty. This is important. This is a clear message in defense of the people, in defense of human dignity. For this, I think, Europe is also values. But first of all, values. Now, about values and what we believe in. Is there or is there not still a place for Christianity within the European debate and its actual way forward? Yes, I think Christianity is our heritage. It's not only a religious problem, but our history is the history of the Christian in the last centuries. It's our 
to put the person at the center of our work is a Christian heritage. To be against the death penalty is a Christian position. To work against poverty is a Christian message. Of course, not only Christian. It's not, it's not a religious problem. It's the Christianism is part, important part of our identity. That is not a religious problem. It's a problem of our identity. For this, I think we need to defend this identity. To put the Christian in the corner is a mistake. To be Christian, to defend our Christian heritage, is not to be against Islam or against Jewish. Our identity is Christian, but there are also parts of Jewish identity. Many countries lived for centuries under Arabic system. Spain, the south of Italy, for example, the, the Balkans, for example. There is a Coptic, but the Christian heritage is very important part of our identity. For this, we need to, to discuss on this. Well, as a final question, I would like to ask about international relations. In the past few years, we have seen an increase in world leaders such as Donald Trump, who advocate a strong nationalist stance. It seems that the headwind is blowing against many international institutions, such as the European Union, United Nations, World Trade Organization, and so on. Would you push the European youth towards studies and a future job in such international institutions? Yes, of course, the international institutions are important because I love my country, but my country is among the European Union and for this it's important also to know and to stay in contact with the European Union institution. But Europe is part of the world. This is important to be part of the United Nations. The United Nations is important for the defense of our rights, for a better cooperation at the global level, for the defense of peace. Red Cross is another example. We need international institutions. And to be in favor of these institutions and to study these institutions, I think, is important for the education, but also for a better life for every European citizen. Well, with your last answer, we may conclude our interview. Many thanks for your time. In closing, would you like to send an open message to the youth, particularly to those who are about to vote in Europe for their very first time? Yes. Believe in Europe. Believe in your identity. Believe in your history. Believe in your future. Believe in your values. And I think it's important for young, for every young people to put the values in your heart. Without values, it's impossible to be a winner. Thank you again, Mr. President. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for your visit.